We, we cannot hear. Yeah, thank you very much for introduction. Sorry for this few seconds delay. Thank you very much for invitation and for all your efforts that you made to make this conference happen and for trying to make me there, bring me there. I'm very happy to give you this talk at least this way. And in my talk, I want to tell you about our radial velocity survey for planets around beyond stars, RV spy. So as Jose just mentioned a few minutes ago, when we speak about discovery of planets, then uh, we know that depending on with which technique we discover planet, the character, uh, the parameters of this planet would be different. And if we would have a look on this diagram, planet mass versus semi-major axis, we will see very clear illustration of this. So as for today, the most uh, numerous techniques with which we discovered exoplanets would be radial velocity, transit, micro lensing, and direct imaging. And in this diagram, we can see that uh, with transit, as Jose just mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, we can discover close planets down to very low uh, masses of them. With radial velocity, the, those are blue dots in this diagram, we can discover also close and down to quite low masses planets already up to 10 uh, uh, astronomical units separation from the star. And with imaging, for example, we can discover mostly only the further away planets. So if you want not just detect new planets, but to discover planetary systems, to be able to characterize the entire architecture of the system, of the planetary system around, uh, Jan, uh, around the star, then the best would be to have a combination of, of course, the best would be to have a combination of observations with all techniques, but at least a few of them would give us already much more information. And uh, my uh, sur survey, radial velocity survey around the um, young planet, young stars, was actually a complementary survey for another survey which was started a few years ago. So I want to tell you about little bit about um, a search for planets around star with imaging technique that was a survey launched in 2015 abbreviation would be ISPY, um, imaging survey for planets around young stars uh, in 2014 they go gain quite a amount of observational time with NACO at Paranal so it's 129 during uh, 2015 to 2019, up to the moment when NACO was not operated anymore. It was a large survey included, which included of contribution of 22 researchers from six institutes. And the main scientific goal was to observe planets, to search for planets around stars, which have um, a remnants of planetary formation, protoplanetary disks, and debris disks around them. So in their sample of 130 stars, stars were selected, the ones who had these disks, and the main science goal was to discover planets at large separation outside of 10 astronomical units. And the idea of RV spy was to complement this survey. Uh, we have since I had says, I mean, Max Planck Society has his own two meter, two meter telescope, but La Silla with several instruments and Ferros is one of one of them. So we had the chance to get quite some amount of observational time and dedicate observations for stars with disks as well. From 2018, when we started to observe our stars, we already gained uh, over 1,000 observing hours on this telescope. Observations are ongoing, and we recently just submitted new proposals. So I expect that at least for one year from now, observations will be carried out. Uh, our survey already is a result of contribution of many people. So 21 researchers from 11 institutes. But I just wanted to highlight here that it's very hard to compare actually our group comparing to ISPY group because for ISPY, it was also some financial grants gained, and it was also people with special postdocs and uh, PhD students positions dedicated to NACO ISPY survey. In our case, it was only me who was ever paid for some periods for doing this research. 
and everyone else helped me a lot, but all motivated with scientific goals. And I believe that this is a very, very huge outcome for this, comparing to money that was spent on this project. In our sample, we down selected uh, st uh, stars from a uh, NACOS survey, but only with debris disks. This is related to the fact that young uh, stars, that young disks have also young stars and young stars are active, and which is caused lots of complications for radial velocity survey. So that's why we have approximately 50 stars, which we selected in um, from uh, uh, iSpy survey, and the rest we complemented from different literature sources to have sample of at least around 100 stars to have a uh, larger sample for statistics. So we have debris disks and we target planets within uh, five astronomical units. Uh, here I want just remind you this diagram and show the uh, space uh, parameter space for uh, iSpy. This is a gray area within red line and yellow is the area of parameter space for RV spy. You see here two colors and these two colors related to the fact that our survey has a structure of two parts. First part is an initial short cadence survey. This is yellow area. So the idea was to observe each star within uh, approximately 14, well, it was a name, 14, uh, aim of 14 consecutive nights, one spectral per night. And after completing this survey, analyze this short cadence data and make some conclusions about parameters of stars, which we can get from spectra, and also from the short cadence radial velocity measurements to get the conclusion about their activity. Because if star would be very active, then it would be too challenging to find the planet in the sig signal, and then probably it doesn't make sense to follow it in a frame of our survey. And then second part uh, of follow-up observations, which covers all this entire yellow uh, region, that would be follow-up of only promising stars for which we see evidences for, um, for their co companions. Uh, here is a parameter um, distribution of targets, which we got from the literature. So in the moment of uh, selection of our candidates for observations. So uh, important characteristics, expectal time or temperature of these objects, which is goes from M to A. Also the main, uh, um, the main part of the sample was still from K to F3. And this is related to the fact that um, uh, M stars are to uh, have too many lines which blend and it's more complicated to detect companions within radial velocities, while stars of early spectral types are actually uh, fast rotators, which means that they that they have wider uh, spectral lines, which causes slower uh, precision in radial velocity. That's why we try to have very few of them just to see the general picture, you know, for statistical reasons, we kept them, but we didn't really have much hopes for the stars. So here you also can see the distances for our objects, masses, uh, luminosities, magnitudes, and the important parameter to which I would want to stop for a minute, it would be the age, because age goes from 10 million years to 10 giga years, which doesn't go very well along with the title of our survey, which is radial velocity, which is young stars. And uh, this is related to the fact that in our case, definition of use would be presence of remnants of debris disks. So that's why we admit that it's not actually that young in common understanding, but it, this is, you know, like for humans, use is never defined by the age. It so it has some different characteristics. This is already a parameters distribution for our targets, but this is already part of results because this is what we determine for our sample from the spectra, the metallicities, log G, V sin I's, and the, um, RMS of, RV, of short cadence RV data, which uh, we got from the an analysis of this short cadence survey. 
I will not stop a lot on, um, on this part of the results. I will just invite you to the paper, which, is, which has been accepted in August this year, and it's already in archive. Please have a look and see more uh, details about our parameters and conclusions about the sample in, in general. Here, I just want to tell you, show you a few examples of, how, of the analysis, what we've done. And in order to come to this point, I just want to briefly remind you what B sector span is, because this is a very important characteristic of the uh, spectral line profile, to which I will refer in my uh, coming few slides. So what happened is that when we have a spot on the um, uh, spot on the star, then and since star rotates, then we will see that on the moment when a uh, spot approaches to us or when it goes away from us, the line of spectral uh, spectral line would be just deformated due to the fact that uh, um, due to the fact that spot is located on this on on another side. And it is actually very important to know that when we see radial velocity shift is due to the fact that line is shifting to one side or another, but not to the fact that line goes through this deformation. And for this reason, it was uh, suggested very easy check by Didier Quillot in his paper from 2001, saying that if we can very precisely measure the width of the uh, of the line and determine the, the sector of this line. And then we compute the difference between the one on the top and one on the bottom, then we will have a different values. And these values can give us characterization of simple uh, indicator of, of the symmetry of the line. And we know that if we have anti-correlation between this parameter and radial velocity, that always would be, well, that would be a very good and firm indicator for the fact that this is an activity. So in this plot, I'm showing you two example cases, which we had. HD 38949 is a star for which we saw clear anti-correlation between the sector span and radial velocity. We observed the star twice in short cadence and uh, it was almost clear that what we see for this star is uh, due to the activity. We also analyzed different line indicators, but I just will not show here because actually here this sector span is more than enough. Another interesting example is CPD 72-27-13. Uh, this star we observed in August 2018, and this star didn't have uh, any evidence for correlation between the sector and radial velocity, and it had a um, it still has the signal of approximately 4.5 uh, days. We were very happy that we had, you know, starting from second round of our observations, we already had a good, um, a good candidate. We found archival data, which go, went very good with our own RV uh, spy data. We made a fit and we already had, you know, scheduled it for future observations. But then in December 2018, this data became available and we saw that actually the signal which we see is due to the fact that star rotates because the uh, signal in um, this data, GLS power, is ex almost exactly the same as we saw in our radial velocity data. And this is actually a case how our first planet and our survey was killed. So another uh, one of the interesting conclusion from our survey would be um, radial velocity precision as a function from temperature and from V sin i. It was a very important indicator for us because we wanted to have a high precision and to know how to select candidates with a high level, with a high chances to get a good precision in radial velocity. And for temperature, we see that for stars below six and a half thousand, we will we would with a high level with, we almost confidently can say that precision would be in order of few tens meters per second. And for V sin i, this is also true up to 40 kilometers per second. So if V sin i is smaller than 40 kilometers per second, then most probably we will have precision good enough for detecting planets. This is the mass detection limit for future companion for the follow-up. 
So the important thing is here is that to see, so this is the mass and this is the temperature and the age of the stars. So important what to say that after the short cadence survey for approximately two thirds of the sample, we still have a chances to detect planets, giant planets, of course, mostly, but only for approximately 25 stars, we still can detect, but only brown dwarf or stellar companions. And the stellar companions is also, since we would see the signal, the signal would be large enough. So we can also say that for stellar companions, we also have a conclusion about it. By the way, in our survey, we detected seven uh, binaries, seven new binaries. I will not stop in my talk in, about this because we are only starting to prepare a new paper about it. And in our paper from this year, you can find more information about it. For the second part of my talk, I want to tell you about our first discovery in the frame of this survey, first planetary discovery. So the star name is HG114082. It's F3 star, very young, with the age of 15 million years, at the distance of 95 uh, parsecs. And this star has been observed with NACO, it has no detection, no detection of planet, of of outside of the 10, um, 10 astronomical units. But in observations with sphere, it has a very nice image of a disk, which is most probably actually already a debris ring located approximately 28 uh, astronomical units from the star. And from this image, we we'll also have inclination of 83 degrees, which is always very helpful for observations of radial velocity. So we analyzed the data and the MLP power of the, the, uh, of the data showed that there is for the signal. This is a data set. We also additionally to our first observations, we found the 20 data points of HARPS in the archive during the same period of our observations. And so as you can see on this um, time series, we have a very, high evidence for the trend in the data. And we have also evidence for the fact that there is some signal in it. I will not go to the model as for now. So just coming back to the fact that MLP shown here is for the trended data already and for combined set of Ferris and Harp data. This vertical blue line is the main, how to say this, the main specificity of this system because among of all sample of stars which we had, we additionally analyzed test data available for our stars. And for 91 stars out of 111, test data already available. So one go and see if there is some um, signals or not. And for this star, only for this star, we had a transit event. The single transit event, which goes along quite well with the radial velocity signal. So this is result of joint fit with exostriker, made by Trifon Trifonov. And uh, so here is the phase foldered uh, plot for the radial velocity data with indication of moment of a transit. And this is a, tran uh, this is a transit event, yes, single transit event in test data. So from this fit, we found, uh, we computed the best fit parameters of the planet. Uh, this paper already accepted. It was accepted like on last week by a and letters. It should become public very soon in, uh, hopefully in the coming weeks, it should be already available. So our planet has seven uh, Jupiter masses. Radius of the planet is one um, Jupiter ready. Distance is 0 0.5 astronomical units and the period of 100 uh, approximately 110 days. So it's actually not that many planets, well, it's around 500 planets for which we have both mass and radius constrained observationally. And this plot shows all these planets. So we have here a dependence of radius versus mass of the planets from uh, exoplanet U. And uh, well, open circles are the ones for which we don't have, we don't know the uh, age. And uh, age is color coded with, um, with a color. And so this 
out of approximately 500 planets for which mass and radius were constrained observationally, only five, I, well, actually only four now, five together with our one, have uh, mass and radius constrained observationally. This is our two planets of around our microscopy B. You can see them here, B and T, you can see them here, but since they are much, have much lower masses, they're actually from kind of different, uh, different team of planets. And uh, V1298, Tau B and E are here. Those are two planets which has age of approximately 23 um, million years. And these planets were known before our one. And by the absolute value, actually our planet is the youngest one comparing to this uh, four other planets because we are, have 15 million years, our microscope around 2022 20, and uh, V1298 is 23 million years. Also within error bars, they are kind of overlap. And so that's why we say that it's probably the most, the youngest planet known. Importance of this planets, planet is actually the fact that now when we know these parameters constrained observationally, we can trace, we can check the models available for planetary formation and early evolution. And here for, as a comparison with the planet detection, the there is two lines by Fortney, by from paper of Fortney 2008 for uh, hot and cold start. And also combined model Cond and Dusty from Barafi Chambrier. And we see now that actually all, not only our, but all three planets of this mass regime are actually more compatible with the cold start, which is which is of course different with what we actually would expect for giant planets of this kind. And here I would come to conclusion, short summary of our survey. So the initial survey is completed. We have characterized all targets in terms of their stellar parameters and activity jitter. Uh, we have not detected a hot companion within uh, a tenth days period, uh, down to median mass limit of 0 0.5 Jupiter masses. We have confirmed three known um, binaries and discovered seven new unknown spectral binaries. With periods between 10 and 100 days, we prepare a paper about it, just some radio velocities are missing to characterize these systems. We have identified 50 stars for which we schedule further observations. 90 of those stars have evidences for planetary companion or brown dwarf companion. And we have one discovered giant planet around the HD11. 4082, which is probably the most, the youngest planet with the mass and radius constraint observation. Thank you. This is it. Thank you, Olga. Uh, questions? Thank you so much for the beautiful talk. Uh, if you can, oh, yeah. this is Savis from uh, Utah. Um, if you, and this is a kind of a naive question I have to, I have to warn. So if you scroll back to the plot where you had the mass versus radius, can you just comment like on where would habitability kind of fall within this whole spread? Well, this question probably not to me, but to people who work more on um, rocky planets, because of course habitability we would not expect for giant planets, not the area which we expect to cover with radial, with our radial velocity, or with spy survey. I would, it would be surprising if we would find some. So I would say that it should be somewhere here and probably referred to other speakers this question. Other questions? Okay, if there are no more questions. So thank you, Olga. It has been a pleasure having you here. Thank uh, you. I, I wish you would be here, but 
Thanks a lot. Yes, Mr. So thank you so much. Thanks. The next speaker is Emeline Bolmont from uh, the University of Geneva in Switzerland. 